Hey everybody, so welcome back to the little mini series that I'm doing in celebration for my one year anniversary on YouTube. So this one might be the one you were all waiting for and that is how do I film and edit my videos? I have to say that this process from the start of an idea to potentially reaching out to people if I'm doing like an honest review or an interview kind of video, to scripting something, if I'm doing like a 10 minute or less video, uh, to the actual filming where I could do multiple takes and then actually doing the editing. All of that can sometimes take uh, upwards over 12 hours. So if you think that doing these videos is just, you know, a fun hobby that I have, it is, but it also takes a lot of time, dedication, a lot of blood, sweat, because this room is not air conditioned <laughs> and tears when, you know, the video that I just did, I find out didn't record or I didn't have this, the mic turned on correctly. And so all that time is just wasted. So just, I hope this video helps you get confidence in using some of these skills if you want to start to experiment with them, but also realize that if you really want to do a lot of things on YouTube or, you know, get noticed and recognized and all of that. It does take, and I'm certainly not in that stage, of course, uh, you know, I, I'm certainly a, a small potatoes uh, here on YouTube, but these are some of the, the tips and tricks that I have picked up. This will most likely be a slightly longer video um, because I am actually going to show you the editing process and you can, you know, maybe follow along if you want to download all of these tools because all the tools I use are free. And if you missed that video, it's up here. And I also have a video talking about the analytics behind the scenes. If you want to go and check that one out, I will link it above as well. Okay, so with that, let's go get started. Okay, so the first thing that you're going to see me doing is working in Streamlabs. So Streamlabs is where I do most of the video uh, recording. And I do that because you can add a lot of things uh, on the screen so you can see that I have my my face down in the corner um, And then I have my screen share. I can also put my logo So when you see the is a data thing logo I do that here so that I don't have to edit it every single time I do it um, Now the thing that you can do in here also that I like is you can actually add some filters um, if you would like So you go to filters you can see me hello uh, this is this is me editing editing me hello now you'll see that you can't see me that's because this stacking of this makes a difference so I'm gonna move this up there I am again hello so just keep that in mind when you're doing this the other thing uh, to keep in mind is you see this moving up and down always check that <laughs> I have uh, unfortunately even last week I had a whole video I did on different types of data visualizations and it didn't record the audio so make sure you don't do that so you can see this looks a little like zoomed in we want to fix that so display capture Let's see the the outline here is what we're trying to get in the screen that we can see So that you can see my full screen there we go okay now if I wanted to hide myself I can just select that and I disappear bring myself back there we go okay and you can see that I'm already recording because I am this is what I'm using to record this uh, I am NOT using the webcam or the microphone that I talked about in my recording video because I am recording my editing process which I do on my Mac I can use both of those things on my Mac, but for this, um, it's mostly going to be you paying attention to what I'm doing on the screen. Um, and I know the microphone is, is decent in my Mac, so I don't have those things set up. But, all right, so let's get into actual editing. So here, you might recognize this from my last video in this series, the series on hardware. So I am actually going to edit that video with you uh, for this third video. Okay, so uh, this was, this is another piece to the um, filming process. I always film a beginning, an intro, and, a, and an extra or an, uh, an end 
area um, and that's what you're seeing on the screen here so this part up until this marker here is the intro and then I added this marker by hitting this button right here it adds the marker for you that is what I use to indicate this is where I would insert the actual meat of the video which is actually in a different video because surprise I don't get my filming right all the time and that's okay that's why editing is a beautiful thing so originally this was supposed to be only a two-part series where I was going to go over the analytics and then the filming and editing process and hardware all in one video for some reason I thought that was going to work <laughs> and it didn't and that's okay um, so what I ended up having to do is uh, filming a new intro and outro because um, I do talk about all the editing in the first video that I did and by the time I got done with that video it was so long I thought there was no way I could also talk about the hardware and the software so now they are split but that means I have to go and grab the first video I did and slice it up to marry it with the intro and end uh, exit talk that I do here so let's go about doing that so I go uh, up here to import media also keep in mind DaVinci Resolve, which is what we're working in, is totally free. And there's probably five or six ways to do anything, right? So if I wanted to add more media, there's probably five or six ways to do that. This is just the way that I do it and I have found that works well for me, but certainly don't take me as the, uh, the authority on this. There's a lot of other people that do it in a different way. Okay, so I'm gonna go in here and I'm going to grab the original video, which I believe is this one. To make sure it's the right video, I can double click this and you see it now has brought it up into my viewfinder and I can play it to see if this is the right one. So I think it is because it went 17 minutes. Let's see. Hey everybody, so today in honor of my week celebrating the very first year of me doing YouTube, Okay, so there you can see I was meaning it to be one video. <laughs> I'm going to cut that part out because that's not true. That's not what you are all seeing. <laughs> so this is the right video. And you can see that just going through the hardware, it took me uh, 17, 17 minutes to do that. So now we're going to get the second timeline started because we want to add the main piece into the two sections that I just identified in timeline number one. So we're going to do that by creating timeline two. We're going to say create. Now keep in mind when you are looking up videos on how to use DaVinci Resolve, there's a ton of them out there. It's a great community. Uh, and I'm always learning something new about the tool. So I will share some of my tips as we go through this because a lot of those videos, you kind of have to know what you're searching for um, in order to find them. So a lot of them do say to go through each of these tabs um, in sequence of editing. So you would start here and you would add your content, your assets and that's, you know, images and other things that you might want to use in the video. You go here and you go through and you, you drag it to the areas that you want to go. I find this piece, uh, I did do this for a very long time and it's so time consuming because you have to move the cursor back and forth uh, and you can only move it back and forth. You can't kind of like jump jump around you can kind of select in here but it's it's a little difficult so I'm, I'm not I don't really like using that piece anymore um, this tab is really good for um, adding in elements and seeing where they fit uh, in the entire flow of your video which is up here um, but I do most of my work now in the edit tab so what we're going to do is we're going to go to the edit tab. I'm going to move, squish that over a little bit. So when you are editing in DaVinci Resolve, there is anything that's visual is going to be from this video queue up. And then anything that is 
audio is going to be from this audio track down. So I actually like to expand this so I can actually see the audio because it helps me really pinpoint when um, the speaking has stopped. I find that really helpful. Uh, some other things to note in here, you can zoom in more uh, so you can get very precise or you could zoom out and kind of see a, a, a larger view. You can also still use the, um, the little markers throughout, uh, which I do when I want to make sure I note when I am going to use um, a transition or something else that I don't want to do as I'm editing. Okay, um, another trick that I wanted to just mention is if you go and delete things in your, in your um, timeline, sometimes it can shift things around that you don't really intend to do. Uh, this is a tool that is used by a lot of professional uh, movie editors, like the newest Godzillas I know, um, where you, they use DaVinci Resolve to do the editing for that. So it's definitely a powerful tool. But I stress, save, 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 save often. Um, there is now an auto save uh, feature in the newest version, which is so needed um, because so often, you know, you get lost in the editing process and there have been multiple times I have been completely done with a video and I've gone to save it and it crashes. Uh, so just be aware of that. Uh, and and make sure you save often. Uh, so when I'm in here and I, I wanna make sure things don't s uh, switch around, you can actually lock things. So let's unlock this and I'm going to show you how we're going to uh, slice a piece out because you can see nothing's happening here. We don't wanna keep that in. So we're going to go to the razor here. We're going to make sure our editing bar, which is this red one, is where we want it to be and we're going to hit the button, see? So now if I move the cursor over, uh, you can see that there's a line here and that allows me to now manipulate this first part without messing up this part over here. Okay, so I'm going to switch back to my pointer here and I'm going to highlight this piece and this is something that I learned the hard way. Again, if you delete things, just by pressing the delete button, nothing will move, right? So you might think, well, so what, right? So delete it, cool. So we would just wanna move all this over, right? Well, now imagine we have done lots and lots of cuts throughout the whole video. I moved this piece, but now I'm gonna have to go through all those other scenes and move all of them. So it takes a lot of time to do that. And so what I thought I had to do was go to this tab and delete it here. Because when you delete it here, let's see what that looks like. Also to undo, um, the keyboard is the squiggly line next to the number one. Uh, so let's hit that. And you can see that I moved it, it moves it back and do it again. And we can see that that piece comes back. Now I'm going to highlight it here and I'm going to press delete and you can see everything switches over. That's what you want. But going between these two tabs was just so time consuming. So I found a trick. So let's go back and say, okay, I wanna delete this. If you're on a PC, use the backspace button. On a Mac, they don't have a backspace button. So you have to use the function and then delete. See how that works? Now it just moves it all over. So I only just recently within the last month discovered this trick it has sped up my editing process so much, um, so please learn from my mistakes. Okay, so uh, let's say that the piece that we just deleted, maybe I want to keep the video portion, but I wanna get rid of the sound portion. Well, how do I do that? I mean, I can't, you see this, I, I tried to highlight just this and it, it does this, it highlights this one as well. So what you can do is you can lock this piece and then you'd hit this. So you see they're both highlighted, but the top is locked. So we're gonna do function delete. See what happened there? It kept the video part, but it's showing me that now my voice and the, the video is now out of sync. So it's not gonna look correct. 
So it does give you some clues when you're um, maybe almost messing up on things. So that's, that's helpful. Um, so let's look at it the other way around. So let's say I want to lock the sound and I want to just delete the video part. So I do that, function, delete. And you see that, it moves it. And it's still telling me that um, now everything is out of sync. So we don't, we don't want that. Uh, so the other thing is if you are getting distracted by noise and you know you're going to do maybe a voiceover, you can mute the track. So maybe you only see the imagery that's going um, where you just, you don't see the video part going. Um, if you have another video like on top that you want to be looking at, meaning up here in like a, a second video channel, be cautious doing this. I have again made a mistake where I did not unmute before I rendered the whole video. So I had the video done, I had it rendered, I finally had it uploaded on YouTube and I even posted it and there was no sound. So don't do that. So let's delete this part because this is not useful and let's play the video. And again, you do that by spacebar. Hey everybody. So now, remember, this video is not the intro video. Remember, I thought this was only going to be one video uh, for editing and the equipment. So all the stuff that I'm listening to right now is redundant. So I now need to find where this intro piece stops so I can cut it out. Actually record them. So let's start with equipment. So, okay, there, I am now talking about equipment. So let's go back. Um, so there we go. So I would, I would do the so, and I'm gonna make sure I'm not wear, saying a funny face. So right there, I'm going to have my razor here. I'm going to highlight and delete. Okay, now that's gone. Now I'm really in the meat of, of this. So let's see what I have to say. So let's start with equipment. So the first thing I have is a webcam. Uh, there is a lot of, of magic uh, how, see right there, I messed up. I wanna cut that out, I don't want you guys to see that. So I'm gonna come over here, I'm going to you know make sure my editing bar is there and I'm going to highlight that. And this is where having this piece um, open so I can actually see uh, the, the cadence of, of speech is helpful because I don't have to listen to the rest of this. See, there's nothing here. Okay, okay, here we go. All right, so now I get to this part and I cut here, then highlight and delete. Now these pieces come together and you don't know that I messed up. Okay, so let's say I want to have a transition between this piece and this piece. Okay, so that's where over here these video transitions are really helpful. So it gives you kind of a sneak peek if you do this, right? Okay, let's say I like that blurry motion. So I'm going to come over and drag it right there. Now I'm going to bring my editing tool. This is what I always do. I always like to see the after effect of what I've done to make sure it makes sense. Uh, how hey everybody so welcome to the so there you go so you can see I actually paused that long period of time because I rethought how I wanted to present what I was doing in the video so I've actually restarted the video so what that means is this just delete that and I'm gonna delete this because it's not useful so this happens a lot um, a lot of my videos I start and stop because uh, I don't script the talking head kind of videos normally. The very technical ones, I do usually have an outline and for the 10 minutes or less, I have that very scripted so I can get it under that 10 minute mark. Uh, but for videos like this, where I'm just kind of giving my professional advice and things that I know just from you know working in the industry, it's, I like to be authentic and this is how I talk to people when they are asking me for my advice so that's why I don't script these so um, it's great for you because you get the real authentic Ashley but it does take longer to edit these videos uh, and it's actually really funny I'll put uh, a picture up on the screen so here 
I am referencing what my studio office looks like and I could describe it to you but it's a visual platform YouTube so I instead am going to insert a what this looks like this room looks like so I don't have that yet so what I will do is I will add a, a little tab marker so that when I am ready to insert that image, I know where to insert it. Okay. Now you'll notice I'll do a snap. So I do that snap so I can actually get um, a sound piece. I use the uh, comedy bubble sound to actually put in that spot so you can see it. it it almost seems like i'm magically snapping my fingers to do something okay, that's where the snap so snap unsnap okay so what i'm going to do is um i'm going to move my cursor or my my thing that's going to remind me to put my image there uh, i'm going to do that right now and then i need to add some more assets uh, but i have a whole area just for sound so let's go look at that Here's sounds and so these are all the the sounds and music and things that I put into my videos the number one place that I look is the YouTube uh, creator location where I actually have an entire library every YouTube creator has an entire library of copyright free uh, mostly copyright free music and sounds so I use the comedy bubble all the time to show that something is happening on the screen because a lot of people have told me they watch my videos in the background or they have them playing um, when they're in the gym or something like that. So I like to do some sound cues so they know that like, something is on the screen if they're not looking at a screen. All right, so let's go back to our editing here. Okay, well now we do not want to grab this audio and overlay it on my, my sound because that's where you're getting me talking and other things happening on in, in the, the thing here. So you wanna add another audio uh, area. So you do that by doing a click, add track, uh, here we go, and stereo. And you see how I have another one here. Great. So that means I can put my comedy bubble right there. See? And it will magnetize to one side or the other of the editing bar. So that's that's really nice. So this sound is always too loud. So now I want to make that sound not so loud. So I go up to the inspector. It's already on audio. And I can look at the volume. And I'm going to go in here and I'm going to say I want it to be a little, little more quiet. I usually decrease it by 10. So now uh, this sound is not going to be as loud. All the music, I have to decrease that by um, 30 to 40% because they are all very loud. Now, um, just to show you what this would look like if I wanted to add an image in and some text. So I don't have my image that would be correct for this, but that's okay. We can just add something for demonstration purposes. Okay, so here's a thumbnail of something. Oh, <laughs> that was my original thumbnail uh, that didn't actually uh, make the cut. So I have my thumbnail here and I can drag it down onto the uh, timeline this way or, and this is what I like to do, I like to come back into this mode, I'm going to grab it and I'm going to just set it where I want it to be, right? Now let's say this is a little too long. I can move this up and down, right, to see them. Uh, this is really helpful when you have multiple video sequences or multiple audio, you can just scroll it up and down. Um, so if I want this to be shorter, I just grab the end like this and I make it shorter, see, just like that. Or I can make it longer just like that. Now, let's say I want this to fade in. Well, wait a minute, I can't even see myself. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna highlight it so DaVinci knows I'm, I'm trying to edit this, this JPEG. I'm gonna go back up to Inspector and I'm going to hit this Zoom. So you can see I can zoom it in 
I'm gonna make it bigger, right? And then I'm going to position it with the X and Y axis, right? This is how I put stuff on the screen. There we go, beautiful. Okay, and you can do a bunch of other things with it. Um, I usually don't, this is usually what I do. Now, remember this comedy bubble is supposed to show when this image shows up. So we gotta make these match. So what I do is I put this where I want everything to go. Oops. I'm going to move it just like that. All right, so let's see what this looks like. Green. See, there you go. Uh-oh, now I know that I need to move this um, on the screen because I'm pointing, right? This is another piece that I do when I'm, I'm actually doing the filming is you have to think ahead where am I on the screen so that I can put things up on screen later in the editing process? So here I've moved over so I can put a bigger picture of my, uh, my office, filming studio, whatever, on the screen. So now I need to move this over. Let's go back to the inspector. And we've got this highlighted. Go to the video piece. Oh, that's zoom. Now we're gonna move this over. Ta-da, now it makes sense. Great. Okay, so that's how I add an image. Let's say I want to add some text to this as well. So you'd go over to titles over here and there's a lot of cool title stuff that you can you can do um, for free. A lot. There are some that you have to pay for, but honestly, everything I've ever wanted to do was free in here. Um, I'm not gonna do any of these. I, I do actually more just plain text than anything else. So let's say I wanna add text. You can see that, there we go, I've dropped it up here. Oops, no I didn't, where'd it go? There we go. And you see, when I've dropped it here, it's made another video uh, swim lane. So now with this, let's say we wanna make it shorter. I'm gonna make it shorter like that. See how it snapped to the end of this? And we want to add, do something to this title. So we're gonna go up to Inspector. We're going to say, hello. And you can change the font, you can change the color. I do not change the size. What I do instead is I go down to Zoom and I can zoom it up and I can zoom it down. I just find that's just easier. And then I can move it. So let's say hello. And let's say I wanna do really something crazy and I'm going to like make it go like sideways, right? So if I wanted to put a background color, I would go to color and I would pick a color like this. And you'd say, well, where, where is it? I don't see a color. Um, the width is already moved over, but height is kind of how you get to see that. So I'm gonna make the height. Oh, oh no, that's way too long. So then I go to the width down here and I'd make it a little shorter. And then let's say I don't want it to be that opaque so I can make it totally dark or even more opaque than it already is. Okay, cool. One point, uh, one, one tip is always make sure that this red highlight indicating that's what you're editing is on the correct area and that your um, viewfinder, right, which is also the editing bar is where you need it to be so you can right so now I'm on this and not this I say this because sometimes you'll be editing text and it'll actually be text that's somewhere else in the video because you have not selected the right text box to uh, to do that okay so you've got that and let's say um, at the end of this I want uh, my my voice to uh, kind of fade out for some reason. Fade only happens when you have two, um, two slices that you're trying to piece together. That's the only reason you would really want to have a fade. So in order to do that, I'm going to do this. I'm gonna put, now you see, like I've got these two things are separated. Now I can put a crossfade in, see, there we go, beautiful. And if I wanna take that out, I just highlight that and delete it. Some other things you might wanna think about doing, uh, let's just, and you have to do it in this tab. So let's say I don't know, I don't like what's going on in this, this scene, I can go over to the tools button and this is where you can, all right, so you can crop it like that. And let's say we're going to change the way that, 
and I'm just doing this with dragging and dropping it, um, how the zooming in would work. Um, here is where I can actually speed up uh, how fast things are going um, so that I can get through something quickly if you don't need to pay attention to all of it. So let's say I am happy with everything I have going on. Um, color correcting is over here where let's say we want to make me like super, oops, go back, super uh, warm or cool, right? So I can move the colors around and change that stuff up. And you do this per clip. So if you only want one clip to be, you know, super scary like this one, then I would do that, right? A lot of different things you can do in here. Um, I Again, I don't use these very often. And then this is where I would do um, dubbing over. Um, when I'm actually talking to things that are on the screen. And you do that by, um, first I always make another audio swim lane just so I don't go over something um, accidentally. So we do add track, and we're gonna say stereo. So what you have to do is you go over to the mixer area, and you can see audio one, audio two, and we're working with audio three. That's where our dubbing over would go. So we're going to say input right here. And if you have a microphone, that's what you would select. I'm gonna select my MacBook because that's what I'm using. I'm gonna say patch. Now it's patched in. Okay, so before you hit record, you want to make sure that everything else is muted because that would get picked up over the microphone. So we're gonna say that we're gonna record here, okay? And then to record, we would press up here and then we would go ahead and record. This is an example of a recording. And you stop it, and it's created um, a file actually in your assets, your medias. So if you needed to move this around or, or do something else with it, you, you could. So let's hear that played back. You might hear some screeching on this. Um, I'm gonna try to make sure that doesn't happen too much. So, so let's see what happens here. This is an example of a recording. Okay, no screeching, I did it good. Um, and so, yeah, I, I just did a dubbing over. Um, I can go in and I can say, no, 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 I wanted this a little shorter, so I make it a little shorter. Okay, so once you have all of your pieces together that you want, you go to the very last tab. Uh, now, I learned this the hard way because if you, if you watched my very first two videos, they're really grainy and weird. So first of all, I was using the camera in my laptop, uh, which is not very good. And I was using a headset, a, ja a Jabra headset. So that's a reason that it was poor quality to begin with. But I also didn't realize that I had to press this button to get the video out. I just did, uh, let me go back. I just did this button here, quick export. Don't do that. It exports it in a really gross format. So instead, I'm going to go here to say that this is my example. I'm going to browse and I'm going to put it into my movies. I'm going to save it. I'm going to go to format and I'm going to put it into an MP4. And then I'm going to add it to the queue. And so what it's going to do is as soon as I press render, it's going to go through the entire timeline and render it into a video. And once that is done, um, I will go through the video and I will find a still that I like, or sometimes I do like poses, um, you know, that might look good for a thumbnail. Uh, YouTube says making your thumbnail um, stand out and make it be bright and um, ex explaining what the video is really about is, is very good for getting people to pay, pay attention uh, to, to your videos. So I take that still and I put it into Photoshop and I add some of the text. Um, you don't need to use Photoshop, um, that's what I use. I will also say that I use DaVinci Resolve, um, but you can certainly use iMovie. Um, there's a few others that are out there that are, I think, easier to understand and pick up. And the only reason I don't use iMovie more often, it has really, it's really easy to learn, it's got really good, um, 
uh, transitions and things in there. But it's really hard to make complex things in, in iMovie, especially if you have a lot of images and text. So that's why I do tend to use DaVinci Resolve. Uh, all right, so I hope this was informative. If I missed anything that you were curious about, uh, let me know. And with that, let's go over and close out the video.